Author, that's fine. Sorry guys, stop yelling. Hey kids, stay in school. Math actually works. That had about 35.7 pounds of force on it. Bada bang! Ta-da! Hey, welcome back. This is part two. Remember in the pre previous video we were prepping the engine to get pulled? You know, because I screwed up the, the goal lifter analysis. I got a buddy with me. Cameron, everyone say hi. Hello guys. <laughs> so we're going to do some heavy lifting today because in part one, I said in part two, we would pull the transmission. So that's our project today. So it's kind of involved. We have to pull the drive shaft out, take the shifter out, drop the exhaust to move the cross brace out, take the starter out. And just like I did with the accessories on the engine, I want, I do not want to disconnect the power cables and just makes it easier if I can move the starter aside and keep the power leads attached. The cool thing is, and I'll show a, a little clip of it, is my battery's in the trunk. So the cable's actually coming from the rear of the car. That means we have plenty of slack in the wiring. So with that said, mission number one is to take the drive shaft out. So be back with you in a second. We're back at the rear differential and we have uh, the end of our drive shaft. So the, for those of you that have a car that you haven't worked on in like 20 years, you probably can't see this because it's covered in grease. So once you clear it away, you'll see you'll have a, a little U bracket with two bolts. And there's one on each side. And what I like to do is mark where they came from. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the drive shaft. And then a little piece of tape on the yoke or actually this, uh, the, connect, the connecting side, just to show this tape goes in that, in that piece. So 9 sixteenths was my guess and I was wrong. It's half inch. Okay, so I got I got the U-bolt out, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tape this with green so I know which one it came off of. And take it to another level. I'm gonna also mark what side. So we don't get, I like to made them up the same they came out. And this will denote which side. And we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Here's the slip yoke end. And you can see this is the transmission. And we have a little bit of play here. And so, uh, camera, why don't you go ahead and push it towards me. You see, guys, see how it pushes in? We're going to now drop the... Go ahead and drop it down. Can you drop it down? There you go. And now slide it out slowly. Bang! We're done. So I'm going to rest it on the exhaust. You can keep going with it if you want. It's not that heavy. There it goes. Good job, Cameron. Here is a great view of the shifter mechanism. Again, mine is practically brand new. I had it restored by Hearst. And uh, for those of you that haven't taken a look at your transmission in a while, this will be caked in grease. Now, second thing to note is if you guys ever have a shifting problem where you're going from, say, first to second or second to third and you're missing or it's not engaging correctly or going to reverse, first thing to check are these bushings in here. These bushings deteriorate because they're rubber. And when I take one, I'll show you when I take them out, but they are, they create too much slop. So when you actually give the command to shift, this moves, this doesn't. That's why you're not getting into gear. 
It's a $20 part for all three of them. Comes with new C-clips and everything. So highly recommend you check that first. That was one of the first things I had to diagnose when I built this car. And I was so relieved it was only a $20 problem, not a new transmission. So next step here is we're going to take those off. And then we're going to take three these bolts off. And we're going to take the shifter out. I already took the shift knob off. So it should just drop straight out of the shift boot. Here we go. I had to get my needle nose pliers to get these off. These just pull out. That's what they look like. Mm -hmm. oh. Lost a washer. That's fine. Sorry guys, stop yelling. I just bumped the camera. As you can see, these just, these just pop out. And you can move the shifter like that. And then tackle the next one. Presto! Finally got them out. I totally forgotten that I can move the shift levers because the transmission is in neutral and these are attached to different shift levers. And as I move each lever, I can actually move each rod. So I had to do some finagling, move the shifter back and forth just to get it clearance. So now we're going to take the, uh, the mounting bolts off. There are two. There's one here and there's one on top. And we'll go from there. So here's what I was talking about with the washers, the little bushings that go in here. Um, back in the day, they were a lot cheaper. They didn't last as long. So those are the bushings you have to change if you have any shifting issues. And that's how clean it looks when you get it rebuilt by Hearst, which I highly recommend. While we're here, this is the speedometer cable that goes into the transmission. And it should just screw off. Like that. See, it's just a little square and square ended cable. It's called mechanical. Electrical would mean you have wire signals talking to your speedometer, but that didn't exist but 50 years ago. Okay, we're back to the transmission. I told you about the uh, cabling. Coming from the battery, that's the big one. This is coming from the starter relay. And I had put a clamp using one of these bolts right there. So it's actually bolted to the case. We're gonna go ahead and take that bolt off. Now it's time to take the starter off, and all we have are two 9 16 inch bolts, cam. I know I kept getting it wrong, but they're 9 16 <laughs> So, uh, what's, if you guys have never handled the starter before, it's actually kind of heavy. It's probably 30 pounds. And I'm going to drop it down, and Cam's going to help me move it underneath the header and just put it on the lift, just temporarily until we find a home for it. So we have to look at the, the different wire lengths we have to work with. So here we go. There we 
There comes it. Okay, it's out. We just took the starter out, and while we're here, I wanted to show you guys something. And I don't know uh, how common this is on other makes, like Chevelles and stuff, but this is actually the reverse lockout mechanism. So when you put the car in reverse, this pivots and translates through a bun bunch of linkages and turns the steering column so you can't turn the steering wheel. So we have to take this out, and there's a cotter pin. There we go. Cotter pin's out. Is that a washer? And this is also a common linkage that deteriorates or doesn't have the right hardware. Or just has gone missing over time. So a lot of people don't even use their uh, reverse start out. But that's it. That's disconnected. We have to take another cotter pin off here. Watch it. towards the camera. And this will just pop out. Just like that. All right. So while we're talking about it, this is the other end of the uh, reverse lockout mechanism. And these parts are typically what's what breaks off or goes missing, especially this bushing and spring. And I'm pretty sure I, I sourced them from Ames Performance. There's also uh, this black bracket uh, bolted to the frame or to the body. This controls the basic lever action of uh, the steering column lock. So this rod here goes all the way up to the steering column. There's a lever on the side of the steering column that goes up and down. And that controls the, the uh, column lock when you go in reverse. So, take a look at it. If you're missing this, that's what it's supposed to look like. And uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'll point you in the right direction. We're back behind the transmission. And in order to pull the transmission all the way out, we have to take the rear mount off the transmission. So we're going to zip these off. I got the air compressor running, so I love making some noise. Uh, we're going to take the we're going to have to drop the exhaust just so we can slide this brace all the way back in doing so there's also two four bolts two on each side we're also going to undo i'm not going to video that that's mundane but we're going to take these off uh, we're going to take the coupling off the headers and and go from there have fun watching <clears throat> All right, we're successful. We took our elbows off the exhaust. This is actually on this side. Um, this is one that goes over here, and that was a struggle. We didn't have to film that. Lots of curse words. So. What we're doing now is I have a bottle jack up here, if you can see that. That's just supporting this part of the transmission because it's going to want to fall down. I'm going to push it up and Cameron's going to take this, the brace and just slide it back about six inches so it's underneath the rear shaft of the transmission. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but is that bolt on that brace right here for the battery cable on this side? There's a bolt that goes into the brace right here. No, no. Do I have enough slack? This is That's a good catch. It's like way before we slide that. Alright, that's a good one. Is there enough slack? How far? I mean, let's just unbolt that real quick. And then just know where to bolt it back up to. 
So, camera got a good catch there. We had to undo a little bolt holding on the battery cable that was connected to the cross brace. So, now we're gonna have at it. I'm gonna push the transmission up a little bit and camera, actually I'll try with my jack first. All right, ready. All right there, stop. Lowered, we moved the transmission brace back so there's some room to work with. I'm going to go ahead and take the shift levers off now so we can get out this top bolt. And that's probably 9 16 right, camera? Probably. <laughs> Okay, camera, look over here. So, what I recommend you guys do is lay them down on the floor. If you haven't taken a picture of them on the transmission, to see so remember in what order they go in, it always gets confusing. And that's it. All right, so we're almost there. While we're here. My, my headers, I don't know if you notice the weird shape to it, but I made these. So if you remember the transmission hump is stock and I matched the profile of the hump. And what I did was I cut off the connect the collectors and I made this transition. This one's a little more tricky because I had a straight pipe I had to put in and figure out. I had to do some trigonometry on that one. So hey kids, stay in school. Math actually works. So Next step here is we're going to take uh, the four bolts up that mount the transmission to the bell housing. The most difficult bolt is actually on the top left above the, the gear changing mechanism. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. And when I come back to you, we're going to have them loosened up. I'm going to have that top one removed and I'm going to loosen up all the other ones and keep this top right one connected and then we'll, we'll start removing the transmission. Okay, so before we start on the uh, transmission removal and do one more step. I'm going to take this isolator mount off. The reason is when we pull the transmission off I like to use the brace as a support and this is going to get in the way because we're going to go straight back with the transmission from the bell housing. We have about that far to go for the input shaft so I'm going to zip these off and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Sorry for the close-up. One more bolt to go, and we're gonna slide it off. Uh, the, dry, the pilot shaft is in the pilot bearing through the clutch. That's kind of supporting it. That's really all that's supporting it. Here we go. There's the last screw. Now, I'm going to push it towards you. Now, yeah, come down. Yeah. And that's all she wrote. We got it up. We got it off. And uh, oh, we have to put a transmission output shaft condom on. And I'll show you how to do that. You've never done it before. Be right back. Hey guys, so here's the uh, output shaft, the transmission. My transmission is still full of oil. And I'm moving it around the shop and whatnot. I don't want it to come out. So I put what I call a transmission condom on. Everyone should know how to use a condom. If you don't. Google it. Should be some fun entertainment. I doubt you'll see one on YouTube, but I don't know. So there's the transmission condom. Just use a rubber band, cut off the end of a plastic bag. Good to go. By the way, PB Blaster. If any of you caught my episode of Wrench Wars, which is Season 3, Episode 6. It was a Pontiac shootout. 
it'll be on Amazon Prime probably next year. Um, but if you didn't catch it, I won a ton of that stuff. It was awesome. So thanks to PB Blaster. They helped us get the uh, exhaust pipes off of the headers and uh, loosened up from the rest of the exhaust. So thanks, PB Blaster. Now that we have the transmission off, we are going to uh, tackle the bell housing. Now part of the bell housing is the shift lever. Um, so if you guys can see this, this is actually what controls the clutch plate, is this rod is attached to what's called the Z-bar. And after we get the uh, bell housing out, you'll be able to see that better. Um, but this, it has a spring, you barely see it, it's right on the edge here, that we have to take off first. And that's what's just holding pressure so the screw, this bar, adjustable bar, does not come out of the shift lever. So we're gonna take that, that spring off. And this is, I have this cool tool, it's like a hook with a handle on it and I'm just gonna pull the spring off that had about 35.7 pounds of force on it just kidding but it wasn't it was snug so uh, now we can actually pop this out now that we have the spring off the shift lever we can take the six bolts off. There are six all along the top. And they're all 9 sixteenths. So I'm going to start with the top bolts. Because as you get your work your way down, it's easier to take the two remaining bolts off the bottom than on the top. Last bolt. Okay, last last bolts out. Now that we have the bell housing off, and you probably noticed I kind of struggled with it, I didn't take the inspection shield off the bottom. I forgot it's actually behind the flywheel, so it was getting hung up on that. And there's also two dowel pins that the uh, one of them was stuck on, which is fine. So now we're going to go ahead and take the uh, pressure plate off because... Um, Two reasons. One, I'd like to get as much space as I can to get the engine out. But two, I totally remembered, you cannot put the engine on the engine stand with this mounted. So while we're here, we're just going to take it off. So I still have my uh, clutch alignment tool. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in so the uh, clutch disc doesn't just come falling on our heads. And these are all 9 16 bolts. They're not torqued too, too heavily. And same thing, I'm gonna take all of them off except the bottom two. Okay, so I'm just gonna finger, finger these off because I'm holding up the scent, the uh, clutch, I'm sorry, the pressure plate with my left hand. I just noticed my ring is on, which I typically don't have when I'm working on the car. Ta-da! Oh. 
And now we can take our clutch disc out. Everything looks good. There you go, boys and girls. That's how you take out your Muncie transmission. I hope that helped. I hope you learned something. I know Cameron did, and thank you so much, Cameron. You're going to be a great wrench head. Can't wait to see your next project. So for everyone else, episode three, which will probably be next week, uh, we should have we have the remaining things to do. We have the Z bar, which is the basically the clutch pedal linkage to the transmission. I have to take that out. Um, the oil filter housing. I did some tricks there to improve efficiency when you change your oil. You'll, you'll like that. Um, dipstick tube headers, engine mount bolts, fuel line, hood. Oh, and one minor detail, get the engine out. Whew, what a process to change a cam, right? Man, this is so much fun. So, if you haven't done so, subscribe so you can see Episode 3, Episode 4, Episode 5 as they come out. Just go into your notification settings, click the bell. The bell will tell the system to email you. It's easy as pie. So, until next time, build them fast and drive them faster.